Hello, my honey friends. Now we're going to watch a drama romance film called Young and Beautiful, released in 2013. Enjoy your viewing. A pretty girl named Isabel is vacationing at the sea with her parents, younger brother Victor and family friends. The girl has been living with her stepfather for seven years in a very wealthy family. In the evening, Victor goes around the house to see who is doing what. He sees that his sister is having a carefree time. The next day, he insists that his sister dare to meet a guy named Felix, whom she has been liking for a long time. As a result, Felix invites Isabel for an evening walk, which she gladly agrees to. After the walk with the boyfriend, they are left alone and do interesting things. We are shown that the girl has no feelings, no love, and no tenderness in the process. After everything that happened, Felix walks the girl home and they say goodbye. The next day, Isabel goes to the beach with all her relatives. Felix joins them, and at that moment, he realizes that he is absolutely nothing to this girl, and she feels nothing for him. Summer and vacations end, and the whole family returns home. Isabel goes to the hotel. She goes to room 695 and meets an elderly man there. He apologizes and tells her that he lied about his age on the website and asks if she doesn't mind. The girl says she doesn't mind. After a short conversation, they sleep together. The man tells her that she looks very young. Isabel replies that she knows this because everyone tells her so. The elderly man asks if they will see each other again because he wants to spend the whole evening with her next time. On her way home by subway, the girl reads a book. When she gets home, as if nothing had happened, she hides the money she earned in her closet and later logs onto a website under her nickname and watches various interesting videos. At school, the students recite a poem, discuss the topic of love, and how they spent their summer vacation. A classmate tells Isabel that an old man once molested them, and her sister did some interesting things with him, all for the sake of a Prada handbag. Then she says that she should have kept his number. Isabel asks if she is serious about this, to which the other says no, because she hates Prada handbags. At the next meeting with the client, Isabel is underpaid. When she asks him that they had agreed on 300 euros, the man blackmails her and tells her to be glad that her parents don't know she is selling her body. Isabel immediately goes to another client and texts him that the price has changed by 500 euros. She does her business with him in the car. She returns home and her stepfather accidentally finds her in the bathroom. He tells his wife that this is the second time in a day that her daughter is taking a bath and he didn't hear her come in. In the evening, the whole family goes to the theater and there Isabel meets the same elderly man to whom she provided her services. She also witnesses a family friend, Peter, showing unequivocal interest in her mother. Isabel receives a message on her phone about a meeting with a client. After meeting this George, the man asks Isabel if she has many other clients. In the evening, her brother asks Isabel what about her Felix, with whom she spent the night at sea. She tells him to forget about him. The sister begins to play tricks on the brother, asking him various questions and making him feel ashamed. The next meeting with George does not go as usual. They drink, talk for a long time, and then he asks her to stay on top of him. But in the end, George dies of a heart attack. The girl is panicked and doesn't know what to do. She tries to revive him, but nothing works. On top of that, she slips in the shower and hurts herself. Then she just gets dressed and runs away from the hotel room without telling anyone. At home, she tells her mother that she slipped in the shower. Two policemen come to her mother's workplace and show her photos of her daughter from the scene, saying that this is Isabel and she is selling her body. The mother says that this is impossible, and the detectives say that they need to find out whether she participated in this voluntarily or was forced to do so. At home, the detectives show that free access to the internet makes it possible to register anywhere under a pseudonym, and they also find the money that Isabel was hiding in the closet. Coming home from school, Isabel meets her mother, who has been waiting for her to have a serious conversation. She sincerely cannot understand the reasons why the girl started doing this. After all, they have a wealthy family and they always have money. The mother wonders if she was at least using protection and asks if she really stopped doing it. Isabel says that all this is in the past now. The mother begins to blame herself for allowing this to happen. Her husband reassures her and says that she shouldn't blame herself because her daughter is a very beautiful girl and it's not surprising that she had offers. The mother believes that if the man had not died, she would have continued to do this. The man says that tomorrow Isabel will testify to the police and then you will meet with a psychologist and everything will be fine. The next day, Isabel tells the police how it all started. She says that one day after school, an elderly man approached them and offered them money in exchange for their services and dictated his number. When she got home, she wrote it down, but called him a week later. They met at a hotel and she didn't like him at all, but she wanted to try again. 
After buying a second phone, she registered on the site and started doing it on a regular basis. When asked by the investigator if she would continue to do it, Isabel says she doesn't know because it was just an experience. All the police officers warn her that it is a very dangerous experience because you never know who you will run into and there is no one to protect you. Easy money often leads to a vicious cycle. Together with her mother, they go to a psychologist to talk about everything, to share their inner feelings, and to find out the reason for what is happening. Initially, the girl told her parents that she did not need psychological treatment and would not go anywhere, but her mother said she simply had no choice. Isabel says that she could pay the doctor with the money she earned, but her mother decided to take the money away from her and donate it to a charity. Isabel goes to a family friend's house to babysit while her parents go away on business. Upon returning, Peter offers to drive Isabel home, but his wife is clearly against it and takes it upon herself to drive her. In the car, Isabel says that she knows that her mother told them everything, and that is why Peter's wife was against him taking her home. Isabel says that she is not the one to be afraid of, alluding to her husband, Peter. Once home, Isabel tries to seduce her stepfather by asking him about his life. Isabel tells her stepfather that he is not her father and asks him what he thinks about it. At that moment, her mother finds them and sends her to bed. She says she doesn't know what's going on with her daughter, and she saw the way Isabel was looking at him. The man says that it was just a provocation, and he understands everything. The mother decides to talk to her daughter again, but the conversation doesn't go well. Isabel says that she knows about her and Peter and asks if she is having fun with him. The mother says, what difference would it make if she said she was having fun? Isabel answers that she would know that her mother trusts her. At her next appointment with the psychologist, Isabel tells the doctor that she doesn't feel anything during the process, but when she thinks about it later, at home or at school, she wants to try it again. She says that she used to see her husband who died often. She liked being with him because he was different. He didn't want much except for one last time. She blames herself for his death and says that she killed him. A classmate tells her that she had fun with a guy but didn't feel anything and now she's worried about it. Isabel calms her down and tells her that this happens a lot for the first time and invites her to go to a party with her next weekend. The girls go to the party with their classmates. At the party, Isabel gets lost in the atmosphere, has a few drinks and goes out to the balcony to get some fresh air. There she talks to a guy and at some point he tells her he wants to kiss her. Isabel feels something for him and they start a relationship. The stepfather goes to call the children for breakfast and finds Victor doing something interesting. Deciding to call Isabel, he hears them busy in the room with the boyfriend. After breakfast, Isabel suddenly tells the guy that it's over between them and she doesn't love him anymore. She takes out a hidden SIM card from the same phone. Next, we see Isabel going up to the same hotel where she went before. An elderly woman comes to her meeting and tells her that she is the wife of the same elderly man to whom she provided services. She tells Isabel all about how they met and their personal lives. Then she offers the girl to come to the room with her for the same fee, arguing that she just wanted to see the girl her husband was having fun with. This elderly woman needed to visit this hotel room, as well as Isabel, because she blamed herself for his death. After a while, Isabel thanks her for making her feel better. She falls asleep and wakes up in the room alone, 